In today's episode, I'll show you the power of the Spanish gold fleet, which from such a small transport every three years, thanks to the right colonization strategy, started delivering us almost 4,000 gold every half year. Thanks to this, my Spain has over 1,000 total income before the year 1600. Hello imperialists, here's Lucas. Castile? Not yet Spain, in the year 1532. Take it easy, all of this has a purpose, and if you want to know it, I recommend watching the first two episodes of this mini-series about colonization. Currently we have colonies in the Caribbean and New Mexico, South America and North America. My personal unions have colonies, but I'll have some soon too. Though today I'll focus on explaining to you how the gold fleets work and how to maximize profit from them. And I'll reveal to you a secret, why I have so many colonies in one region. Although I think I mentioned this at the end of the the previous episode. Those who watched already know, this is what our income looks like, this is what my army looks like, and roughly this is how our view of the world looks like, the one we can see. For now, I still have to wait to develop my gold mines, until New Mexico fully cores all these provinces. As you can see, all these dashed territories, these are the ones that don't yet have a core, or they're still coring them, meaning hardcore. Actually, it's New Castile, not New Mexico. And here's a very important thing, you need to watch out for the governing capacity of our colony. When it gets close to its limit, you obviously need to build courts in our colony, and you need to remember to repay its debt regularly. But it's best to give our colony some very small subsidies, but where were they? Oh, here they are, for several decades, seven gold I think should be enough. Great, Aragon has established Florida, and for the first time I'm embarking on a journey to circumnavigate the globe, I wonder if we will succeed, because I have islands scattered everywhere. I'll introduce several wars at once, and that's because we need to start conquering quite a lot for our colonies, as well as for us in the old world, and we've circumnavigated the world. As the first in the world, wow, I gained prestige, which didn't really benefit me. Wow, but on vassalage, I didn't have a way to spend it. But since we're the first in the world to circumnavigate, we can accomplish this mission. I'm waiting for one of our colonies to establish here, so I can take all these territories for us, because I'll give this area to Portugal, and I'll soon give this to Aragon, so I have those 10 provinces. In general, we want each of these colonies of our nations, which are subordinate to us, to have at least 10 provinces, and honestly, I'm now moving my army to the Incas we want to conquer here, and here create the last colony for Aragon. And voila, we'll have three colonies in the region of America, meaning the USA, the 13 colonies, yes, colonial something America. I'll pass on Louisiana because it would be a real ordeal, and Canada probably also isn't an option, so the Incas remain. Remember the amount of gold I'm currently getting from New Castile? 652.97, and see how much it'll be by the end. And we receive this gold every two and a half years, roughly. And now, a very important thing. For our treasure fleets, developing this monument in Madrid is practically a must-have. A small spoiler from future Lucas, you don't have to upgrade this monument. You get its two free upgrades from this mission, a new capital. Of course, at the time of developing this monument, I didn't know about it. Another modifier for our gold fleets is our maritime doctrine, which I already have set to the Grand Armada. The third place where we acquire this modifier is our government reform, which I'll be changing after a while. For now, as you know, we are still colonizing, so we are focusing on faster and cheaper colonies. The fourth place where we will acquire this modifier, and actually the most important one, is of course when we will have a crown colony, currently a self-governing colony. We will be able to set something like Gold Fleet and its tax, a new self-governing colony. Remember, I choose it because it then gets an additional colonist, and it always helps us in colonizing a given region. If you want to maximize your colonies, consider playing towards parliamentarism. It is currently very strong. The downside is that you will lose the nobility estate, meaning one military point and several other bonuses we have here. But you'll gain, for example, a fifth colonist. If you introduce parliamentarism as a country like Spain, you need to meet the following conditions. Have over 30% burgers. I don't know why mine is now written as 29. I had 39% just a moment ago. And this estate has to support us. I prefer the nobility over an additional colonist, because soon I'll be switching to colonizing Africa, India and Indochina. So, our colonization period as Spain is probably coming to an end, because the west coast of the USA isn't really worth colonizing, and we are in for a significant war against the Incas. Don't worry, we'll manage. Wow, I'm at war with almost all of the Inca Empire. I totally forgot about renewing my attacks on France or England, I need to get back to that. And because of this, they started to set up colonies, since they can afford it. Look, France has some colonies established here, England up north in Canada, and unfortunately Aragon doesn't have the range to reach the Incas. Such a pity. I thought he would have a range from here. Probably won't work out. Maybe it would have been better to have Aragon expand in this direction so they would have control of this whole spit of land. Then they would certainly have the range to the Incas. Ta 
tough luck. Hey, 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 let's conquer that for him. We can become an empire. And actually, I'm going to do that because I'm not planning any tag switch other than to Spain. And anyway, there's no condition here saying I'm not an empire. Oh, times of prosperity. Why does it always pick the worst provinces? I just don't understand. Really? All right, but here we have a trading company. So trade. Here's the first development from the era. We probably want religious wars. And you have to be careful here. We definitely want all these provinces for ourselves. Actually, I care about all provinces with gold to go directly to our colonies. Not for Aragon, not for Portugal, for our Castilian ones. And honestly, I core all provinces myself. Normally, it should be only five to form a colony and then let the colony handle it on its own. But if you care about the rapid development of the colony, it's better for you to core as many as possible. After all, you usually play Play better than bots, right? But why can't Aragon just core? Could it be that it depends on which ocean the port faces? Oops! And see how nicely our Mexico colonizes for us. Two to three colonies at once. All right, it's high time to take our troops from the new world or focus on the conquest of these Native Americans from North America. You can do that too. Although I have a long peace period here, but not with everyone. So I'm going to North America after all. Europe and my unions can manage on their own religious war. And honestly, I don't know why the Protestants decided to sign their own death war. We have a 5 to 4 numeric advantage over them. <laughs> oh, and that's quite okay because as a result Austria will probably strengthen. It is possible that soon after it will take both the Czechs and Hungary into personal unions and then take over Austria. In the colonies it's worth expanding a few monuments. One of them is Zacatecas with Mine City, which increases production in this province. With gold here, this one province will be worth three other provinces. So it's always worth doing. Another quite good monument is Tenochtitlan. It increases the entire production in one province. And the third monument is Cerro Rico del Potosi, also working like the previous monument, increasing gold production. Interestingly, this monument has been somehow changed. And look, there are some bonuses for Ming. I don't know why. One of the more important things for us will be converting provinces with gold to Catholicism, because later we will be developing them. I have some strange luck here. And see how developed Mexico is, and yet another very important monument, which I totally forgot that I already captured, accelerating colonization. See what modifiers it gives, a slightly smaller bonus than from the previous era, for colonization. We want to capture it and we want to develop it and the war ended in our victory, I guess. Yes, that's right. The emperor triumphs and the official dominant faith is Catholicism. In the meantime, my colonies developed a bit. As you can see, I invest a lot in them to grow as fast as possible now. I'm also going for colonization of the entire west coast after all, because anyway, I'll have to do something with these colonists of mine. And I also continue the war with these tribes in this region. I mean, I just declare them. And my colonial countries are fighting for me because I don't want to transport troops here anymore. My armies will probably be engaged soon, either in Europe or in Africa. Unless it's time to get to India. Ooh, the yellow bird is gone. Okay, now, New Castile. Uh, you can say that it has grown up. There's not much left to colonize here anymore. Because California is already here. So we change the type of this colony. Self-governing. And now, if you want to increase your army limit, go for Crown Colony. If it's fleets you want to boost, then go for Private Enterprise. The remaining aspects remain unchanged. Only those bonuses at the bottom will be applicable. Although those give more money. Oh, but I'm changing it to Crown Colony. Because we'll be heading for the Gold Fleet. Next, choose Subject Relationship. The modifier that increases increases our income from the gold fleet. And see, this new Castile gives us a 16 force limit. That's quite a lot, especially considering we already have seven colonies. And when I start annexing my personal unions, most of these colonies will expand. In addition, we can also increase it by building buildings to increase the number of troops in these colonies. Now, however, I'll be saving some gold with gold for a bit. In a moment, we'll reach level 14 of technology. Then we'll have the ability to build manufactories, which will mainly increase our income from colonies because they concern the raw materials that occur here and also some African parts. And we have a new ruler, Enrique V de Trastamara 666. This Aragon Republic is so powerful. That's one of the reasons I'm trying to keep it on a personal union all the time. Although I don't deny that after these wars, I'm fighting now. I'm already integrating Aragon in the early Commonwealth versus Russia. Who will win? And the time has come to create Spain diplomatically. We have 13 merchants. We earn 239 gold. We have an army of 134,000. From New Castile, we receive 984. Basically, we gain new colonies. Literally, all colonies have become ours, but not many, only three. Oh, but there's another very important thing, which I forgot to mention. Here before this decision, I checked everywhere Aragon had already ignited some organizations. So now, after integrating Aragon, we can redistribute them. So we'll gain some development and of course this bonus. All right, but we also have a few new colonies. So yes, 
is Spanish Mexico, we don't need to change this to a crown colony because it already is, so we can certainly modify our relations and increase our gold fleets. Wow! I didn't notice this mission. Look! 100% increase in treasure fleet income for 25 years. And we can build galleons? Wow! I'll wait with this mission until Portugal is annexed, because I've just started that process. I've changed all the colonies I currently own into crown colonies. And I've practically doubled my income from the gold fleet. Look, and soon the Portuguese ones will come in. Plus, I must confess to you about a very important mission for Spain, where many players make a mistake and click on this mission too early. When should you click it? When Anglicanism triggers in England. Then you can click on it, I've saved it for now, as you can see. Because we received claims to the English throne. Otherwise, if there was no Anglicanism here, you would get territorial claims only. Hey, and what is this mission with Tercio? Wow, I can have some special units, that's 44,000. Oh damn, minus 30% shock damage received, that's a lot. Maybe before starting the invasion of England, I'll replace my infantry in these armies here. I'll get rid of it here. And look, at the moment, I have a treasure fleet income of 325%. It's calculated in a strange way. I should have 3,000 from gold, not 2,000. With all these bonuses, I received just over 2,127 gold. Much less than I thought, actually. So it's time to send out our gold armada and get a union over England. Besides, England probably doesn't have an army on the islands. None were found. The best part is that establishing this union really doesn't bother anyone. Because this is the only country with this religion in the world. And only France will be somewhat upset with us. By the way, I think Poland won the previous war. I just forgot to check here. But I don't see that it has shrunk in any way. I'm curious about the impact of building this monument. 2040 and a monthly increase of 8 to 13, we build the monument. 24 to 13 increase. So it will affect the time. For now, I'm developing influence ideas. So I can't really developing these provinces. To show you the impact of developing these gold provinces, though I have developed a few already, but from what I see, they have collapsed. Three mines fell apart for me. Literally, three mines. In general, you have two factors that you can influence here. The size of the pool, which is written here, is influenced in two ways. Firstly, all provinces with gold count. Each one increases this pool. The second thing is, of course, our modifier, which we collect, which is the treasure fleet income. You can also affect the time of the generation of the gold fleet in a very simple way. Just develop the gold production in the province. The higher the development of the province with gold, the faster these gold transports will come to you. Wow, look at that. After the conquest, my mission also changed, stating that Catholic becomes the new state religion of Great Britain. And look, previously it was every 2.5 years in New Spain. But after development, I get these gold transports every 8 months. And of course, I forgot the most important thing. Here in the new world, in these colonies, we can also establish organizations. And we want to do this on all our provinces with gold, primarily. Where's the gold? Oh yes. So, if you didn't see where to spend administrative points, now you know where to spend them. Is there a map to make it easier? I don't know. Let me know. I must admit that for the 8th reform, for the first time I have no problem choosing an additional colonist and a 10% increased production of goods in colonies. Well, after consuming Portuguese colonies, seven more merchants, it also gives me a treasure fleet income of 520%. It might be my record. What was the maximum you had in your game? Let me know for sure. And uh, of course, I was supposed to trigger this mission, which besides increasing our gold fleet, gives me access to. Wow, these ships are super powerful. Ship trade power modifier plus 33%. That's a lot. And heavy ships. Heavy ship combat ability. Hull size. I think the English man of war is stronger. We get almost 4,000 gold from one colony every half year. Wow! And you know what's the best part? Look at our army limit, over 400,000, 531 gold income, and this will soon double, because now it's the year 1583, and basically 10 years have passed. And, as I said, I doubled the income, 861 gold. How did I do that? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I built a lot of manufactories in the meantime. It's an incredibly large amount. Now, I'm also conquering provinces in Africa. I want to get some provinces from France. And overall, I'm surprised that this time I managed to approach a thousand. I don't have it yet, but I think I'll manage to get it within 10 years without the appropriate ideas and without having trade in Genoa. And that's because I have almost a 100% share in Seville. And just look, only three ducats are escaping us. If I had the right ideas at the moment and had removed exploration and expansion and instead went with trade, quantity and religious, right now our income would be one third higher. Plus, this monument would be very helpful for us. But, you know, we need to own this land. So integrating Burgundy and actually moving the trade here to the English Channel because it would be easier to do that than in Genoa. After also integrating Great Britain, easily 2000 gold will flow to us. And my empire basically covers both Americas now. New Finland is also ours because it's a colony of Great Britain. I'm slowly conquering the rest here. In a moment, two thirds of Africa 
Africa will also be mine, because I want to conquer a lot here. And then I'd go further, conquering the necessary provinces in India. And who knows, maybe I'd achieve something I haven't yet. Oh, I also don't have the achievement for Tercio. But really, Forever Golden, which is completing the Spanish mission tree, I've always wanted to do it, but never had the time. And honestly, in this case, I'm really close to completing the missions. By the way, I'm currently doing the mission for paper in Madrid. Seriously, just two. I don't want to say anything, but I previously fully developed it. Who would need that? Do you notice that such things should be described in these missions here? So that you could plan everything accordingly? I believe the answer is yes. All right, now we're heading with 50% crown land. And unfortunately, I think I'll soon have to fight for Austria. But in this case, I really got a weak Austria. Usually, it should already have the Czech Republic under a union, Hungary conquered in a union, and at least a part of Poland conquered under a union. Unfortunately, we won't have this here. I must also admit that the Spanish Golden Galleons, look at them, ship combat ability plus 10, sturdier ships. But we also have early frigate, which means trade ships with such bonuses, reduced navy attrition, fleet movement speed plus 1, ship trade power modifier plus 33%. And honestly, I'm tempted to now make an episode with Portugal, which I changed to two Sicilies, adopt Sunni Islam in it, then I don't know if two Sicilies is an end tag. But if not, I would change to Spain, which would be Sunni. I would also make certain monuments, because here we also have ship trade power, 30% in Kilwa City, and a second monument in Bengal, Bara Katra. Hmm, I also have a feeling that something was adjusted in tariffs previously. These colonies practically gave no income at this point. Yes, see how much increasing the tariffs from our colonies gives me. I think about 60% of their income. It can't be said that I'm too greedy, right? Okay, almost a thousand. And we got it. 1000 gold in income. True, there are also war reparations here, but let it be, it still gives us over 1000 in the year 1597. Of course, if you have any remarks. Let me know what I could have done better, but I think I showed you well how to manage trade company. I showed you well how to manage colonies, but if there's something I could have done better, always write to me. I'm quite curious about it because in my opinion, for example, I could also have collected trade in Genoa, which would have also given us a lot. This is one of the best trade regions for us, possibly the English channel, which I also think that within the next 20 years, either way, if you like my episodes and how I build powerful nations, I recommend you this episode in which I conquer all of North America with a small North American tribe.